the Chiefs met their physicality, and then they 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 went, wait, we'll match your physicality, and then every big play and big moment, we'll make the play. We're the Chiefs, and that's kind of went went down there. I mean, you know, hey, it's it's the the Chiefs, the way they've reinvented themselves here the last few weeks, the way their offense is playing, right? We talked last week. Teams don't play B minus football and then all of a sudden get in the playoffs and be play, play A plus football. That that really doesn't happen. It's really rare. That just shows you how great they are and the fact that they could tinker and adjust the way they're playing, still make it happen. Andy Reid again, patience with the run game? Like who is wh- wh- who is this guy coaching the Chiefs and what they do with Andy Reid? It's the second week in a row. I mean, 24 rushes, they only had 68 yards, but he stayed patient with it because he wasn't going to let the Ravens just get off on them being one-dimensional. What a throw by Mahomes right here, right? This unbel- this is the first touch. An unbelievable throw, unbelievable catch. When he threw that ball, I mean, see, I think what happens, Chris, we're so used to seeing him do this stuff, we've become desensitized to how special it is. I know. That's why I got on Twitter yesterday during this. This is why. It wasn't disrespect to the Ravens or anything because I was sitting in my living room yelling and my family, and you can hear I'm, I'm hoarse. They were all going, you're losing your voice. Relax. And I was like, <laughs> are, are, I was like, this is effing insane what we're watching. I mean, it's insane. They, they make plays that are just like, for you're right. For anybody else, we're going, that's the most damnedest play I've ever seen in my life. With them, it's like, Oh, it's another drive. They just, oh, they made one of those Chiefs plays. It's remarkable. And then they do it with like a dirtiness and a toughness right now where it's not pretty. It's not wide open. They are playing the defense. They're staying patient with the run game. Spagnuolo's showing he's one of the greatest defensive coordinators in the history of the sport. And, yeah, on the road, disrespect, chippiness. I mean, Mike, I can't get over all the people yesterday I'm watching on TV and pregame shows that were trying to tell me if Lamar won the game yesterday, like it put him on the same level as Mahomes. I love Lamar. You love Lamar. We know that. But like, really? You're going to say that? The guy that's got a losing record in the playoffs, he hasn't even been in the playoffs for three years. You're just going to go, if he wins today, he's up there with the guy that's been the best player in the sport for six years in a row? Like, what? Come on. It's like people are disrespecting the Chiefs, too, and that's just fuel for their fire uh, that they love. They really love, and it, I, I love it, too. It's contagious. This is a prime example of the value of experience in these moments, and I thought of this earlier today before the show started. Since the game yeah, where the Ravens were the one seed in the divisional round, since that game when the Titans came to town right. and beat them, right. since that loss – the Chiefs had gone to three Super Bowls and won two of them. Before that game, the Chiefs hadn't been to a Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes. Right. And so you go from that game, the last big moment for the Ravens. And I know they, okay, they delivered in the divisional round last week and avoided getting beaten as the one seed with the week off for the second time in the past four years. But When you look at the lack of playoff experience the Ravens have had since losing to the Titans when they were the one seed, they were 14-2, and they were the team that we thought were going to the Super Bowl that year, and you look at all the experience the Chiefs have gained since then, all those reps, all those moments, all all of it, preparation, practice, thinking, studying, executing, sweating it out, finding a way to win, that's all extra experience the Chiefs had that the Ravens didn't yeah and I just think we need to have a greater appreciation for experience and I know there's a fatigue out there with the Chiefs if you're not a Chiefs fan you want somebody else and if you're just neutral you want somebody else I'm sick of seeing the Chiefs it's like the 70s I'm sick of seeing the Steelers I'm sick of seeing the Cowboys I'm sick of seeing the Dolphins Pete Rozelle was sick of it right Pete Rozelle envisioned a world where everyone had a chance every year Pete Rozelle would hate this it's the Chiefs and the Chiefs and the Chiefs and the 49ers and the Chiefs and the Chiefs and the Chiefs and the 49ers and And that experience continues to lay the foundation for more of it. And 
you know, I know people get excited. Oh, oh, look. Oh, the Chiefs are off. Oh, the whole, oh they, nobody can catch the ball. Oh, look at what happened to them on Christmas Day at home. Oh, they're done. They're done. It's over. It's done. The guy's 28 years old. He's far from done. Get used to this, folks. Go do something else on Sundays from September to February if you can't <laughs> deal with it because Patrick Mahomes is going to be doing anywhere. this for another 10 years <laughs> yeah. at least. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not going anywhere. I mean, he's really – Kind of just starting to hit the prime of his career, uh, America. So I, I hope you you get used to it. He's he's really at a point in his career right now where physical and mental ability are all pin, like hitting a pinnacle. Where he's really going to be as good as he's ever been the next few years. So yes, watch out. Let alone like you've talked about there, what they've built, the moments they've been in. There's going to be there's nothing that's going to ever face him now. I mean, he's, he's accomplished it all. He doesn't feel pressure. Like we talked about, you know, I'm down to the Eagles. We're down to the 49ers. That was a Super Bowl. This is just, we're just going on the road to win the AFC championship game. This wasn't pressure to them. All the pressure was on the Ravens. And of course the Ravens blinked. They didn't answer the intensity bell, the attention, the detail, the execution that the chiefs did early on in the football game, let alone the baller moments. And then, as the Ravens finally settled in and you started to go, okay, here they go. This is going to get interesting. The Chiefs defense, whether it was the strip of Zay Flowers as he's diving in the end zone or the interception of Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson in the end zone, you know, those were, of course, big championship moments by the unit, the defense of the Kansas City Chiefs that's carried them home this year, and they were incredible moments as well. We're going to put a pin in the Ravens side of it until next segment. I want to follow up on something you said about Mahomes getting to that sweet spot where you've got your physical abilities yeah. and your mental abilities have blossomed to the point where there's nothing you haven't seen. Right. There's nothing they can do to fool you. You walk up to the line of scrimmage. You don't have to run around with your hair on fire and wait for something to happen and make a shortstop throw with both feet off the ground across your body right on the money, right. the first baseman. Right. Because you know before you even have the ball in your hands who's going to be open and where you're going to throw the ball. Yeah. He is craving. He is desperate to get to that point. He talked about it before the season. Right. I talked to him about it after they beat the Patriots the week after that disappointing loss to the Bills where they had the bad, not bad call, it was a good call. It was the bad moment from Kadarius Tony and Mahomes had a bad moment and how he reacted to all of it. But he's still desperate to get there and he knows he's going to get there and when he does, it's only going to get better for the Chiefs and worse for everybody else who's had enough of the Chiefs. I'm serious. Get used to this. It will be an upset if we don't see more of this in the future. And as long as he's healthy, somebody made this point in the pregame show yesterday because, you know, I picked the Chiefs and I've been saying we're witnessing history. We need to understand Mahomes is Mahomes and Mahomes is always going to find a way. And if we haven't learned that by now, we're never going to learn it, but we should. Somebody made the point about, and it may have been your dad, I can't remember, but about the the Super Bowl loss. The only reason they lost that game is because he had a toe that needed to be operated on two days Definitely. later. And both if tackles got hurt in the championship in that game, game, remember? Yeah. If if he but if he could have moved in that game the way we've always seen him move, they would have beaten the Buccaneers that day. Yeah, yeah. They'd or, have three, right? And they'd be working on four, right? And, and Tom Brady catch would the have ball. six. They catch the ball that day. Who knows what the hell's going to happen, right? I mean, Tyree Kill dropped two touchdowns. There was another but drop as well, where like he made him un, unreal plays. You know, they were they were they were outplayed that day. He was not 100%, but you're right. If he was 100%, who the hell knows what happens? I mean, it, this is a guy that understands how to play team football, yet understands, wait, we're not playing our best as our team. Jump on my back. I'll carry us now, guys. I got it. It's just rare. It's rare, right? And, yes, the way, you know, like you're talking about, where he is as a general at the line of scrimmage right now, right, I'm not going to – it's getting close to Brady and Manning type stuff. I mean, again, this is the Ravens. The Ravens, as we saw all year, confused everybody, made every quarterback look weird. The, the, the plan of attack, the way the game was managed by the Chiefs was extraordinary. They got every ounce of what they could get out of their offense. And one, yes, because of Matt Nagy and Andy Reid and their coaching, but two, the quarterback allows them to do it, like we've talked about the last few weeks, right? 
I mean, you just don't fool Mahomes. He every play, he's at the line of scrimmage. Hey, 52, even, 45, even. Ah, blah, 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 every play. So he he's getting to that point like you're talking about. It's scary. Let alone we know the physical ability, the drive, you know, the work ethic. It's all next level stuff. And he's got the view of Brady the GOAT always sitting right in front of him that he's chasing and he just never relents. It's unreal. Got to get to three, got to get to four, got to get to five, got to get to six, got to get to seven. There's that, he's got that goal. It's there. It's in plain focus. And that's what he's trying to do. And you mentioned like what they do before the snap. I don't know if this has happened to you yet this year, but like there'll be times like if you look away after a play and you kind of look back up, the Chiefs move around so much, both the running back and the quarterback before right. the snap. It's almost like an optical illusion, and you think they're on defense. That's <laughs> yeah. how much they're moving around. Yeah, right. Have you, has that happened to you? Like There have been times where it's like, wait a minute, who's on defense now? Yeah. Because you see Mahomes going all over the place like a middle linebacker, and then the guy next to him Yeah, then Pacheco's that receiver, but... and he's walking back to running yeah. back, and then he kind of goes back at the receiver, and he comes back, and then he shifts the tight end over, and then he tells some guy to motion, and you're like, damn, are they disguised? in a blitz or are they running an offensive play here what the hell yeah. are they doing uh it's it's incredible it is they got everything and that like we talked about a few weeks ago they've embraced who they are they've embraced the ugly there they are yes as amazing as Patrick Mahomes is and everything we're talking about and Kelsey showed up and was a superstar yesterday and of course Chris Jones showed up he's a superstar they didn't even have Willie Gay they didn't have Joe Tooney. They're phenomenal players. To your point, they ain't going nowhere where Mahomes is, let alone they're one of the youngest teams in football. They're going nowhere. And they're finding new ways to do it. I mean, that's what I think is impressive. 17 7 and a half, no big deal. Mahomes will take care of the ball. Defense, lock it down. We'll play ugly the second half, and we'll just we'll win the game. They didn't do much on the offensive side of the ball, but they didn't mess the game up on that side of the ball. And when they had a chance to close it out, there goes the big throw to a guy that we saw drop balls all year long in a big moment. They don't care. He goes, I still got confidence in you. He's been telling him he's got confidence in him, and he throws Marquez Valdez scaling a post down the middle of the field. He makes an incredible adjustment, catches the ball, and night-night Baltimore. We'll see you next year. Hey, you made that big catch in Buffalo last week, and right. that's just a product of the confidence, the faith, the help, the support. Mahomes told me after that game against the Patriots where they had some ugly drops, What I said specifically, what are you going to do to help these guys get better? And, you know, he said there's no magic to it. It's just about getting your confidence back. So when you have the greatest quarterback in the world constantly telling you what you can do, at some point the light goes and you make the big catch in the big spot, and your team's going to the Super Bowl. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.